So good morning, everyone. I've just heard the clock striking outside and uh, uh, welcome to the first day, the sort of gentle introduction to the Open Mod Workshop. Um, my name is Will Usher. Uh, I'm uh, leading the ECEMF project, which I'm going to present a little bit on later today. And I'm delighted to be here to, uh, uh, yeah, to start this sort of interactive workshop over the next two hours on participating in this uh, in this forum, which I will uh, I will talk about more. So uh, the format for the next two hours is uh, is is this. I'm going to give a quick introduction, talk about what we're going to do over the next two hours, and the code of conduct. So how we want how I'd like you to interact with one another. The idea is to have an interactive session and get you get you doing things. So this is not just a a presentation by me, um, but I'd, I'd like you to get involved and, and uh, participate. Um, I'm going to try and motivate the session first with a sort of 15 minutes on, you know, why do we need to compare models? This is uh, this is the main sort of body of what the uh, uh, of what the, the or the main topic of the session, and then we're going to we're going to work on sort of how to conduct a model comparison, and this is where I'll we'll really work together to try and define uh, how we can create a sort of European community that compares models, gets researchers talking to one another about energy uh, energy research. Uh, and then we'll close off, maybe 30 minutes is a bit of a stretch, but I'll, I'll summarize about how we in the ECMF project want to work to create a community of energy modelers across, across Europe and create a sort of international node within Europe that then engages uh, with uh, with similar efforts in other countries. Um, so first, who are we? So uh, my name is Will Usher. I'm an assistant professor at KTH Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm. Uh, and I'm joined here today uh, with two doctoral students from our research group, the Division of Energy Systems, and they're down the front. So uh, Hauke and, uh, is gonna be helping with the online participants. Uh, and Emir is going to be supporting us in the room here. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just so you know who who we are. So, if you have any questions, then you can uh, ask us at any point. Uh, and if you want to know a bit more about our, our research, then I've put a few links on the slides, which which will be shared after the session as well. Um, so, uh, in this session, we have a code of conduct. Um, so. Uh, it's always good to sort of review how we want to work together. Uh, and so, uh, and just sort of explicitly state these. So uh, I'd like you all to participate in an authentic and active way. So do you get engaged with the, the topic we're talking about? Please be considerate and respectful in your speak, speech and actions. And please attempt to collaborate before conflict. Um, so do try and be uh, constructive in your criticism, if you do have criticism, and I, I hope you do, we want to get your feedback and ideas and suggestions, but please try and phrase those in a way that's constructive and not destructive. Uh, and of course, please be uh, respectful of others and, and do not use demeaning, discriminatory or harassing behavior and speech. Um, we are today in IASA, a working research institution, so do be aware that there are other people uh, at IASA who are trying to go around their daily business so um, no no running and diving into the fountains even though it is 20 degrees in uh, in in uh, Austria today and um, yeah so remember that there's members of the public around as well okay that's the sort of official uh, <laughs> code of conduct over um, uh, and you can read more about the sort of policy on the the github site as well where there's a, a file just describing this in more detail um, so today we've got a couple of uh, tools uh, to support the workshop. So due to the hybrid mode, um, we're running this session as a Zoom webinar, uh, and uh, we've decided to use a Miro board. Um, so this is a, an online whiteboard where you can uh, use a screen, uh, use a computer to create sticky notes and post-its and, uh, and so on. So I'll give a, a brief sort of introduction on how to use that in a, in a moment. Um, and uh, I'll ask uh, Gretchen or Hal Halka to paste in this link into the chat in the webinar so you can access that. 
But if you're in the room, then please do get this screen ready. Go to tinyurl.com forward slash ECEMF open mod. Uh, and then you'll need to type in the password. And uh, we can work together individually or in, in, in groups in the room. Uh, online, you'll need to work individually. Um, uh, you can ask questions in the Q&A uh, function on, uh, on Zoom, um, but otherwise you're going to be on, on your own, so unless you have, can communicate with your, with your team in, uh, in other methods. All right, has everyone managed to access that link? Does anyone need a bit more time? Put your hand up if you do. Okay, I'm gonna move on now. So why do we need to compare models? So in this session I'd like, or this section, I'd like to sort of motivate what we're talking about. And I'm gonna start from fairly simple or fundamental basis. I'm guessing most people in the room have something to do with energy, I hope. And maybe you're doing some modeling. Yes. Who's, uh, who's developing or using energy models? Okay, a few hands. Um, anyone dealing with mainly just data? data analysis, okay. So, and then anyone doing something else? Okay, a few hands, okay, great. Okay, so it sounds like you're in the, in the right space anyway. <laughs> so, uh, when we're doing energy modeling, research into energy and climate, one of the main aims that we want to have is to, I guess, to influence uh, and to support effective decision-making uh, at the highest levels, but also say at the European Commission, perhaps globally, uh, and uh, maybe at a national level as well. So we want the outputs from our analysis to, to support better decision-making. There are many sort of stakeholders involved in this. And given the urgency, the, the, the climate emergency, and the urgency on increasing and ever increasing urgency of the energy transition and the huge challenges involved, we need now to engage with a huge, with a greater number of stakeholders than before. So it's, it's no longer acceptable just to sit in our ivory towers and work on energy models. We need to get out there and actually uh, work across a, a different number of, um, uh, with a different number of stakeholders. And we need to advocate for our research and we need to, uh, uh, be more active in engaging uh, the rest of society on, on these important topics. So the main message here is that, you know, there's a lot of stakeholders out there that we need to, we need to work with. Uh, and within our, our European project, um, this is something that we recognize. Uh, and then there are a huge number of institutions, and these are just those in the European Climate and Energy Modeling Forum project. There are a huge number of users who uh, developers of different types of energy models. Um, so we've got 15 partners in the uh, in the project uh, that I'm I'm coordinating, um, uh, but there are many more, and uh, I'm very interested to listen and hear from you uh, in this session today. And then, again, just sampling the models that are represented in our forum, there are a huge diversity of different types of models that answer different types of questions. So for example, there are computable general equilibrium models, which take a more macroeconomic perspective on the energy transition, and maybe are global in scope. There are carbon cycle models that again, global in scope and look at uh, the relationship between emissions and temperature. There are energy system optimization models that take a much more detailed uh, uh, look at supply and demand of energy, maybe at the a global level, but often at a regional or just a national level. There are integrated assessment models that have a, a broader sectoral approach. They don't just look at energy, but they also look at, say, land use change uh, at water. Uh, and these might be global, they're aggregated 
uh, or work at quite a spatially aggregate scale. Uh, there are models such as optimal dispatch and expansion models, so very detailed. They might look at a particular country or the region, and just looking at uh, the electricity and heat at, say, an hourly uh, time resolution. And then there are models that specialize on the demand side. So we've got this huge sort of complexity in the European research space in energy. We've got a huge number of stakeholders, um, all with different perspectives and interests in the energy transition. We've got a large number of research groups uh, working on developing a huge number of different models. So um, that's the now, yeah, so that takes us on to the first exercise. So I'll uh, I'll just go to the uh, Miro board and give you a quick introduction to Miro. Um, so this is the uh, first uh, slide I'd like you to have a look at uh, on Miro. Uh, maybe you can just watch my screen for now. Oops. Let's lock that, please. Um, Uh, so uh, what I've done here is, and what I'd like you to do in a minute, uh, this is just a, 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 an example, um, but I'd like you to think about your institution that you represent. So I've put KTH here, uh, and then I've created a box for our, the model that we have, so Assembe, uh, and then thought about what projects that works in, and then what stakeholders we try and link to or uh, influence or support through the project and then thought about the, which stakeholder type that refers to. So what I'd like you to do in the next sort of 10 minutes is have a go at this. And if you zoom out, so I just use the scroll wheel, or you can pinch uh, if you have a trackpad, you can zoom out on, uh, on the Miro board, and there are lots of templates down here, so you can do your own mapping. So what I'd like you to do, uh, what I'd like us all to do is to try and contribute to this and build up a sort of mapping of models and stakeholders that we engage with in the room to try and understand you know what's the what's the sort of broader ecosystem here um, are you engaging mainly with national um, stakeholders are you engaging with european stakeholders mainly with industry perhaps you're you're working with society and the idea is that uh, uh, at the end of the workshop i will uh, collate this and we'll share this back to the community so that we have a sort of uh, a more thorough understanding of, of this sort of ecosystem of, uh, of, of stakeholders within the uh, uh, well, within OpenMod. Uh, yeah, so I'll give you, um, I said uh, 10 minutes, but I'll give you another sort of six minutes until 20 past 10 uh, to have a go at this and uh, I'll walk around the room. Okay, I've had two questions so far. So one is, are we restricted to two projects? Nope. So please, uh, please add uh, any sort of nodes in this little graph. Um, to do that, you can drag a, a shape from the left hand side You can just click and then pick the shape that's relevant and then drag it over. And we need to make it a bit bigger. Oops. Uh, yeah. 
or the easier way maybe is to click on an empty node and then you can duplicate it. So you can right click and then click duplicate. And then you can just double click and then uh, type something in here. Uh, and the other question is, what's the link? So uh, I will just um, copy this link uh, and write it here. Yeah, not uh, for the people in the room. Right, I see a lot of feverish activity. So I think I'm going to give you another couple of minutes because. Looks like there's quite a lot going on. Um, I should also uh, state that, uh, so we do plan on sharing this information, so don't write anything that you don't want to be shared publicly. Uh, <laughs> so maybe don't put individual names uh, down here, but um, like of, of people, but uh, I think institutional names and, and model names is, uh, uh, is interesting. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, there is no answer. Yeah. 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 Y
Right. So um, uh, the mirror board is going to remain open. So feel free to keep working on it while I'm talking. But um, uh, you can also uh, come back to this later if you like. But thanks very much, everyone. I think so. Already we've got quite a lot of uh, sort of an interesting cross section uh, of uh, of models and stakeholders and sort of different patterns of interaction. So I think that's that's interesting in its own right, just seeing who it is that you engage with. Um, so, for example, we've got some French citizens involved uh, with with this project, informed by. Uh, which involves uh, uh, the uh, Omega Alps model. There are other models which uh, which focus on a on a on a broad range of, of research uh, stakeholders. There are other models which, um, or there are uh, other institutions which have a broad range of models um, which inform national policy and and research. So I think bringing all of this together, we could get up quite, or we could uh, obtain a snapshot basically of the different sort of types of interaction between models and stakeholders and uh, and and researchers. So that's really, really useful. I'm gonna move back now to the presentation. Uh, so what I want to do now then is talk about where the European Climate and Energy Modeling Forum fits within this, within this space, this, how it sort of meets or tries to meet this challenge of dealing with a huge number of stakeholders, modelers, and, and research institutions. Uh, and I'm going to do that through the, describing the objectives that, that uh, the, the project is formed around. Uh, so the ECMF project started two years ago, um, and uh, it's a Horizon Europe project. Uh, and it, we've got about 15, uh, 15 partners uh, spread across Europe, uh, one partner in Australia, uh, about 20 different modeling frameworks involved. Uh, and the idea of the project is to create a, a forum, a meeting place for researchers and for modelers, people working on energy and climate uh, within Europe. Uh, so what we want to do in the project is really bring together researchers, modelers, and analysts, pictured with these smiley faces, 
uh, together with with the stakeholders who are across uh, research, uh, 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 industry, and uh, and policy, and at different levels. So working within the Commission, within the European Commission, but also uh, 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 national governments as well. Uh, and the first objective really then is to work together with stakeholders to to understand what the main policy challenges are facing them and try and match make those with uh, with the types of answers that models can inform and, and can provide. And uh, so here today we're at a, at a sort of capacity building workshop, I guess this is the first workshop like this that we've run in the project and we're, we're planning to do many more. Um, and so we, the project, our project wants to support the modeling community in trying to fulfill some of this, uh, uh, this interaction with policymakers. And so I'm, in, I'm interested today to hear your sort of feedback on and ideas on how you think we could do this better. So central to the project is to develop what's called a, a coherent evidence base. Um, so the idea is that, well, there's this huge number of models, they're all producing different results, uh, but we actually need some kind of process or exercise to distill the main insights from, from these huge number of models. Uh, and so uh, within the project, we're doing a model comparison, and I'm gonna describe this process in more detail later. Um, but basically, we have a the the diagram in this or the picture in the center represents these all of these different models. This type of portal represents this process of comparing the outputs and and inputs to the models, and then this uh, this sort of cylinder represents then this this idea that we have a, a one evidence base, and this doesn't represent a sort of consensus view about the future, but it represents. A, a database which is more understandable by uh, the end users, by the stakeholders. Uh, so today we're we're doing this uh, this training, uh, and then with this evidence base, we want to provide more sort of robust insights to the policymakers. So we create this sort of feedback loop where we co-create questions with policymakers, engaging stakeholders. We go away and do some modeling. We uh, provide this sort of or produce this robust evidence base and then provide feedback back to the stakeholders. And this isn't a, this is a sort of continual process. So we're constantly doing this, this sort of cycle of, uh, 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 of engagement and, and modeling. And then our final objective is to, is to sort of be a, be a point in this international network of similar uh, groups. So, for example, there's the Stanford Energy Modeling Forum, which does a similar type of exercise. Um, there's the IPCC, there's the IAMC, and various other acronyms who uh, represent networks of researchers uh, with uh, similar objectives. <clears throat> so, just to restate this in uh, in in another way, the problem is this: we've got a sort of high level policy question on the left feeding into this multitude of uh, energy and climate module uh, models and everyone's producing different results so you can imagine that you know national uh, national governments in different countries are asking the same sort of questions to their modeling teams how do we how do we meet climate neutrality uh, how do we play our part in this sort of european transition to to climate neutrality Everyone comes up with a different answer, and then you're just left with confusion at the at, at the output. So, the 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 problem we're trying to solve is to move from this to something that's more like this, where we have modeling teams doing a comparison uh, of their their model results, and then we come up with a more sort of refined uh, understanding of what the the common strategy could be at a national level to meet these European targets. And really what this comes down to is just getting researchers to talk to one another uh, and to talk with stakeholders as well. So it comes down to sort of communication. But of course, given the number of, uh, of, of modelers, of researchers, of stakeholders, this is no sort of easy task. So within our European project, we've been working sort of within, the, within the project for the past two years. And now we really want to um, 
sort of open up the, the box, I guess, of the European Climate and Energy Modelling Forum and reach out to the community. And that's that's why I'm here today, really, is to try and think about how we can better engage with the European research community and support you in talking to stakeholders and engaging in this sort of model comparison process so that we can better understand the models and the outputs from our, from our research. So just to summarize, there are lots of different stakeholders who gain value then from uh, working with energy modelers, uh, working with the insights that we produce from our, our energy and climate models. Um, there are a whole load of different institutions um, that work at different levels uh, with different types of models that answer different types of questions. And the aim of the ECEMF project then is to try and provide one focal point one of maybe multiple focal points, but one focal point at least, which helps with trying to understand how these models are different from one another and uh, the difference between assumptions, uh, the scenarios and the results and provide a more sort of robust evidence base which can then inform, inform policy. Okay, so in this next section, I want to talk about what a model comparison actually is uh, and different sort of types of model comparison. Uh, if you're working with models, you probably compare or do a model comparison um, uh, every day. You're probably adding some kind of feature or changing some data in your model and then you're running the model and then comparing it with what you did before. And I, on some level, that's a model comparison. It's also just model development, right? But um, uh, I guess the, the 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 process of doing a model comparison isn't is isn't rocket science. So it's but it does require organization and a process and sort of a logistical uh, logistics. And it's about getting people together again, getting getting them to talk. So I want to talk about uh, the different ways in which you can do that. So I think there are there are probably various different types of model comparison. You can take a very technical focus, for example, and here you would really interrogate models from a sort of mathematical perspective. So what are the differences in the formulation of these models? Um, uh, why, you know, these are both optimization models, but they seem to produce different results. Let's dig into the formulation and, and find out why. Well, why do these models behave differently? So we're, why are we using a simulation model instead of an optimization model and why? What, why do they uh, give very different uh, answers? Uh, the second sort of focus you could have for a model comparison is more of a data focus. So here you'd think more about, okay, there's quite a lot of data out there. There are different sources of data. So why have you chosen a particular set of assumptions to then feed into your modeling? Right? Why, why are you looking at a, 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 this sort of pattern of, of demand in the future? Why not? Why, why have you chosen this high level? Why, why not a low level? And this is more about understanding then the role of the modeler in interpreting and selecting data uh, to then inform their modeling process. And the third focus is more of a, a results focus. So this is more about maybe we're not so interested in the, um, the model formulation or in the data that's selected, but we just want to look at the results. So. Uh, given a particular question, then there are a whole range of different answers that have been provided, and then working back from those answers, trying to understand what's what what the difference is. And then, of course, there are sort of combinations of the above. So you could take a technical and a data approach to uh, understand both of these, or maybe you look at all of these aspects. Uh, common to all of these sort of focuses, though, is this idea of eventually you're going to come across this issue of harmonization and semantic agreement and 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 scenarios. So basically defining the uh, what it is that you're comparing. And I think that's this is something which is normally underestimated in its difficulty and complexity. But it's also one of the great values you get just from doing the exercise. 
So in by just going through the process of trying to compare models with one another, you raise a whole load of different questions which are very useful to you as a modeler, as a researcher. Like why have I chosen a particular set of data? What do I mean when I actually say final energy demand? Do I include heat in that? Or uh, am I just talking about uh, is heat the energy service or is it the demand to the building and, and so on? So you begin to unpack all of these things you might have taken for granted when you were uh, or just ignored or, or missed when you were going through the, through the modeling. So, uh, yeah. So a few case studies, I've mentioned the Stanford Energy Modeling Forum already. You, you may well be uh, um, familiar with Stanford EMF or at least seen uh, one of their many, many publications. Um, but this is a uh, one type of, or sort of, I guess, type of modeling uh, exercise you could take. So Stanford uh, have been going for a very long time. Um, they're now on their sort of 37th study. And these are sort of multi-year exercises uh, involving a huge number of research groups. So I think in EMF 37, they have, yeah, they have a working group of 100 members and they're comparing something like 28 models. So these are massive sort of really big exercises involving lots of big modeling teams. Uh, they tend to focus on one sort of policy question, mainly with a North America focus, but sometimes global and sometimes in, in other regions. Um, and this, the, the normal output is a, a special issue. So they, they focus on producing publications. Um, uh, so this is one, one approach. It's very large. It requires a lot of coordination and uh, the EMF uh, basically exists to support then this, this exercise. At the other end of the scale, um, then I've, I've started with some seed funding at KTH, uh, the Nordic Climate and Energy Modeling Forum. And this is basically just a, a collection of researchers that are interested in comparing their models. So we have 50 members, uh, 50 individuals across various institutions, and eight modeling teams who are contributing to a, uh, to a comparison study. And this is quite an informal approach. Um, there's no funding involved. So if the researchers have time, they contribute some scenarios, and then we try and do some work to understand the differences between the models. And this is really just used as a, a, a sort of coffee shop or a a place to bring researchers together to discuss their models with one another. So it's a completely different sort of scale to the Stanford EMF, but it's also a really valuable uh, 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 sort of model for, um, uh, for doing this comparison. And we're just focusing on the Nordic countries um, with an emphasis on understanding sort of resources um, like biomass and also the role of hydropower, hydrogen and, and renewables. Um, and then, yeah, I wanted to mention the Modex projects. So this was, uh, I guess, more of a technical comparison, although some of you in the room might correct me. Um, but this was a really interesting uh, uh, sort of collection of six projects which explored many different models uh, and looked at in, in a lot of detail at the formulation of the models and how they were structured and then the different types of insights you got from those models. So it included vehicle diffusion models, energy system models, and, and network models, uh, and then looked at a few different sort of thematic scopes. And I've linked a publication here, which is the, the sort of um, editorial for the special issue, where which describes uh, an overview of that, that exercise and then the, um, uh, the studies in detail. First of all, because I was part of that uh, model, well, so Sorry, one sec, uh, Ludwig, can we give you a mic? Yeah, yeah because I was part of this um, comparison and Modex was a, a set of projects. So there were six model, six Modex projects and one was the open Modex project which where I participated as well. So this was focused on, came out of the open, open mod community. So it was one of these achievements of, of the open mod. And what I think is, has to be mentioned here, which in the open Modex project, there was one beside the technical um, model comparison, there was a um, a workshop or a series of workshops on usability. So we made 
modeling teams from one framework try to use the, the frameworks from the which they were not used to. Mm -hmm. So a switch of modeling teams. So you have the modeling perspective, but you are not working with the one that you are used to. Mm -hmm. And from from our um, when we resulted the project, everybody said that this was one of the most valuable things of the project is to have a space where you you can use the other ones and you you have to deal with the documentation you have to deal with the usability you have to deal with how to handle the input and outputs and you really see the the advantages and disadvantages mm -hmm. of the other modeling world so uh, for the ECMF I would definitely strongly recommend to do some of these workshops as well, force other people to use the models that they're not used to. Mm -hmm. um, and as another aspect I want to mention is there was a data management group across these projects where I was part of as well. So each of the six projects sent data experts and we tried to exchange data not across these models, but also across projects. And it was really, really hard. And our main goal was to exchange metadata. So exchange data across these different projects is, is really complicated because of licensing, because of data formats, of all these technical hurdles you, you have to take. Mm. But the one that we did is make people write metadata and that you know which data was used. And then you see a first step of data comparison. Um, and there was a publication about this as well, um, data harmonization group. Mm -hmm. So really interesting projects um, around open and collaborative programming. Great, yeah, thank you very much, uh, uh, Lutuk. And um, yeah, and also great to have a, a contribution from the audience as well. So please do shout out and uh, if you have anything to say. And this is, uh, uh, yeah trying to be interactive um but yeah do do check out the uh the modex projects and yeah i'll, I'll certainly be reading the uh, uh publications in uh in interest now and seeing what how we could integrate some aspects of those into the uh, ecemf project okay so whizzing through this so i'd now like to talk about the ecmf model comparison so the approach that we've taken so far in in the project um and i guess a quick summary really of what it is that we're doing is we we've designed a study we've run a bunch of models and then we've compared them and then we sort of loop back to the beginning and uh, what i'm going to talk about in this section is sort of each of these each of these parts and then we're going to have go back to the mirror board and we'll uh, sort of review each of those steps and i'd like your feedback on uh, on how you think this process could be opened up um, and how you think from your perspective you could or could not contribute and then how we could how we could make this process more open to the community so what i didn't mention actually is the uh, the ECEMF is a four-year project, but the idea is that the forum uh, will live on beyond the project. Uh, and so we have a great interest in, uh, in working out how to make the forum supportive and useful for the energy community. So it will focus on model comparison um, and uh, be something that ex exists in the sort of same space as open mod but has a, a very different focus to op open mod um so that's where the sort of your input today will sort of feed into that process of trying to come up with a, a sort of business case really so how do we make the ecmf the, the this energy uh, forum energy or oh, sorry european climate and energy modeling forum how do we make this something which is uh uh, useful to the community, uh, the research community, and the community of uh, policymakers and other stakeholders in Europe. Um, so, uh, in 2022, we published uh, what we've called the Model Comparison Protocol, and this is basically a, a, a document which provides instructions to uh, the modelers. Uh, in the forum 
uh, on and specifications for a set of 14 diagnostic scenarios. And the, uh, the idea is that each of the modeling groups goes away and implements these 14 scenarios using their modeling framework. Uh, and uh, then they uh, sort of process their models, provide the results back uh, to the forum, uh, and then these uh, results are then compared. And uh, that is basically what has happened. Um, uh, this process has been very sort of iterative. So uh, within, within the, the project, uh, we've had a sort of continual process of then refining the scenario definitions, uh, doing the modeling, looking at the results, reflecting on, uh, on, on those results, and then uh, going through that sort of iterative loop again. But some sort of issues that pop out. So firstly, um, there's a quite a large number of models, uh, sorry, of scenarios. Uh, and uh, we, uh, in this document, we defined what are called diagnostic scenarios. So these are really kind of sort of toy scenarios, if you like, or extreme scenarios which test one dimension of the model. Um, so, for example, there are scenarios which remove entirely one category of technology from uh, uh, from the from existence. So, what happens with uh, the transition to European climate neutrality when you don't allow nuclear uh, in any country, um, or you don't allow carbon capture and storage, or no biomass? Uh, and what this exercise, these sort of diagnostic scenarios, tell you is how the models react to this type of um, uh, sort of stimulus. Uh, and sometimes you'll see models which just uh, cannot cannot solve. So if they're an optimization model, there's there's just no alternative to some particular technology dimension. And that uh, that insight is quite useful for for the modelers. okay? My model is not flexible enough to actually meet this meet this type of target, but it also has potential policy insights as well. You know if we remove uh, a technology, and all models fail to solve, um, then that's maybe an insight that this is a, uh, either all the models are wrong uh, or this technology is crucial really to this, um, uh, this sort of mitigation. Um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, to this sort of policy goal. Um, the other issue which um, uh, Ludwig sort of mentioned is, is one around sort of data and semantics. So the process that we took in this uh, in this forum is that we provide uh, a, a template and say, okay, you you need to produce your model results using this template. Um, and uh, then this template, we're using the IAMC, so the um, Integrated Assessment Modeling Consortium, maybe. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Integrated Assessment Modeling Consortium template. Um, and this has a huge number of uh, result variables, so uh, which we then find or subdivided into different categories. So there are 182 prior one or priority one variables which every modeling team need to report on. Uh, and what quickly became apparent is that with different models, not every model can report on different variables. Uh, and then, uh, as you can see on the slide, then there are different region aggregations and differences. So immediately we're in this space of just, ah, uh, it's a complete mess. Some models report this, some models don't. Some models have different region aggregations. Some models include Turkey in their definition of Europe. Some don't. Some have EU 27 plus uh, UK, and it all becomes very, uh, very complicated quite quickly. But that's kind of a really useful insight as well. Um, so... Uh, and uh, uh, Hauke led a paper recently, and, and we'll touch on this, I guess, in the in the session uh, after this one, just on the difficulties of comparing uh, different types of models. So how do you compare integrated assessment models with whole energy system models when they have different spatial and temporal resolutions? So yeah, I've just uh, mentioned the results template. But I also wanted to flag that there's sort of there are tools available that help you with this process. And yeah, actually, I didn't mention this. So there is then uh, the headache of taking your model outputs and then converting them into a format that's compatible with all of the other models. Uh, 
So you can think about coming up with tools and for the assembly model, which is based on osmosis, we, we ended up writing a Python package to, to help with this. Um, and uh, uh, PyAM, which uh, has another session later today, also has many tools uh, which are useful for uh, dealing with the IAMC uh, template as well. So yeah, so this but this is another consideration when you're comparing models is the uh, effort needed to convert model outputs into something that's then compar comparable. Uh, the next step then is to um, uh, compare the results and upload them somewhere so that there is a, a common store of, of data. And the approach we've taken in ECMF is to use the uh, uh, EASA Scenario Explorer. And we've now published um, the first sort of set of results uh, uh, at this uh, link here. Um, and one thing we need to think about in opening up ECMF is then how to coordinate the uploading of results. So do we have a sort of uh, a, a, a completely open repository or do for results where anyone can upload results, or do we have some kind of formal process or informal process where you contact us to get an account and uh, how would the forum operate in, in that respect? So it's this sort of trade-off between quality and support and, uh, and so on. But uh, having this Scenario Explorer or some kind of online database is really useful because you can start to automate um, this comparison process uh, so, for example, the EASA Scenario Explorer provides an API, which you can then um, write some code against to download results from all of the models and, and start comparing them. So that's that's quite useful. And then you get to the finally you get to the point after doing all of this legwork of then actually comparing the results. And there are different ways in which you can compare the results. So that the simplest is probably just to do some plots and say, okay, here are all of the models, and here are some model results across various dimensions. So here are, here are six of our diagnostic scenarios, uh, and there are lots of uh, different models on the x-axis, and the y-axis represents, in this case, final energy. Uh, and you can see here there's sort of, there's gaps. Some models aren't reporting final energy because of definitional problems or because uh, they weren't able to meet the deadline for the for the upload, uh, but this is the sort of simplest way where you can begin to extract insights from your uh, from your models, just comparing the the outputs. And then there are other more um, uh, abstract but more powerful ways to compare results. So this is from a, a paper by Harmsen um, uh, prior to ECMF, uh, and this is uh, based on sort of indicators or deriving indicators from the model results and then and then comparing those with one another. So in, on the left-hand side, we've got carbon intensity on the x-axis and energy intensity on the y-axis. Uh, and then the I believe the dots represent uh, different scenarios. No, sorry, they represent time. So uh, you can see the, the, the change in combined uh, energy over carbon intensity uh, between 2050 and 2100 in this case. And uh, we've just, uh, there's a, under a preprint actually just released under the project um, uh, in a paper led by Mark Decker uh, of ECMF, uh, we've looked at model fingerprints. Uh, and this is another way of sort of restating what was on the previous slide. But in this case, focusing on individual models and trying to characterize the models by their behavior over a set of uh, indicators. And those indicators are derived from the model's performance from a set of diagnostic scenarios. OK, are there any questions or comments on, on that? That's Are there any questions online? No? Okay. So, um, yeah, I'll, what I'd like us to do next then is to um, dive back into the Miro board. So I'll, uh, I'll just zoom in to exercise two. 
So I, I introduced uh, this sort of very, uh, I guess, simple process for working in ECMF. So we define the, the, the study designing scenarios in this model comparison protocol, which is then released publicly. Uh, the modeling teams then go away and run the models, go through that process of converting their model results into a common format, and then uploading the results to a scenario database. And then the comparison can begin, and we need to think about how to how to do this comparison. So, what I'd like uh, from this sort of uh, this interactive session now is for you to provide some comments, criticisms, ideas about how you, uh, your modeling team, your modeling group, could engage or couldn't engage in this process. So, uh, on the first slide here. I've, I've uh, copied all of the scenario descriptions from uh, the model comparison protocol, and I've put a bunch of sticky notes down here. So what you can do is drag a sticky note, and then uh, you can write a comment. Uh, so you might like to write the name of your model or of your of your research group, and then uh, uh, and and then your comment. Um, and you can also add comments to sticky notes. So you could uh, you could add a comment like this if you wanted to. So you can comment on other sticky notes or directly on the uh, uh, on the uh, uh, on the scenario definitions here. So it'd be interesting to hear your sort of insights on uh, on these diagnostic scenarios. Do these uh, definitions make any sense to you? Uh, and if not, uh, what do you think you would need in order to uh, model these types of scenarios? What types of scenarios do you think you could uh, would be useful to compare um, across uh, across modeling teams? Uh, in the second slide, I'm interested to hear about your sort of regional aggregation. So, how do you at what scale do you model? Um, do you represent Europe in two regions, or do you uh, represent uh, do you model at a sort of global scale? Do you model at a uh, national scale, uh, or sorry, this is a uh, sort of nine regions, or at a, a national scale, or do you model at a much higher resolution, but for a much smaller scope? So both scale and scope uh, in this slide. Uh, in the next slide, uh, I'm interested in, well, what do you think are the main dimensions of the model results that you could compare? What's what's the most interesting thing to um, uh, uh, to compare in the model? And uh, for inspiration, then I have the full list of 680 uh, <laughs> variables, which you may or may not want to take a look at. I'll leave that up to you. But um, uh, I'm sure we'll probably come up to some sort of consensus on the main dimensions of model outputs. But uh, uh, coming up with uh, obviously, there's a trade-off there between inclusivity, so what models can produce which outputs, um, and then also the detail at which you can um, uh, compare the models. So it's all very well just comparing primary energy, but then we sort of miss out on a lot of information from more detailed models that represent detailed supply chains and so on. So we may not get to any <laughs> any kind of consensus here, but getting some idea of the the range of models and the different types of outputs would be useful. Okay, so we've got a an hour left of this uh, of this session. So I think we could probably take a sort of ten minute or five minute break, um, uh, and then uh, you can get into uh, into this. And there are a few more slides which I'll jump in at eleven thirty to represent or to to introduce those. But um, yeah, so see you back at five past 11, uh, and then we'll start this interactive session. Hello, yep, hi everyone. So we're well into the interactive session. We've been having some good chats uh, in the room here. And so just a reminder that we're now looking in this exercise two, this green box, and we really like your comments on the scenarios. So I've had a few questions, like one question in the room was, well, we'd be quite interested participating in ECMF, but what's 
you know, what's the sort of minimum level of effort we'd need to like, uh, to be involved? Um, how would we run our models? And maybe a good starting point is to look at these diagnostic scenarios and, and think through how you could work with these types of definitions. And then on a practical side, you know, how, how much effort would it take you for you to run these, uh, uh, run these scenarios, uh, produce, convert the model results, and then to what extent you'd be interested in discussing these, uh, uh, these results in, in meetings and so on. So participating in uh, sort of public facing uh, meetings of the, of the consortium. <coughs> Uh, but otherwise, I'll, uh, I'll leave it uh, up to you, and I'll be wandering around the room. And then uh, Halka is online if you have any questions uh, on the webinar uh, and uh, you want some feedback. So just had a really interesting question, like, is the aim to harmonize assumptions here? We're going to end up with running one set of models under the same set of data assumptions? Uh, and the answer is, uh, it really depends. Um, the, the aim isn't necessarily to come up with uh, uh, a harmonized data set, which you then run through all of the models. That's one way of doing a model comparison and more of the sort of technical approach where you want to understand how models differ in their uh, implementation. Like what are, what's a different formulation of models and how does that then affect the results? Um, but in in reality, like running models under the exact same um, uh, assumptions is is pretty impossible um, because these models are so data intensive. Um, uh, what happens or what we've done in the ECMF is to provide a set of uh, scenarios. So the scenarios sort of encapsulate enough of a, a sort of harmonized view of the world, but we then give freedom to the modelers to implement those in, in their framework. So that's a very, it's kind of a hands-off approach. And then it raises a lot of questions about, about assumptions. So generally what you want to catch or what we focused on comparing assumption wise is things like feasibility, like how much carbon capture and sequestration is like you know can be feasibly built in the next 10 years like if we're assuming that we the model jumps to a 80 percent of or well, i don't know i don't know the figure off the top of my head but i don't know, 300 gigatons of ccs in the next five years like that's that's not realistic because there's there's been that there just aren't enough planned projects uh in you know starting on the ground at the moment for that to actually eventuate so we're focusing on sort of catching aspects of feasibility in the scenario results um, rather than trying to ensure that modelers use the exact same assumptions around uh, renewable resources and so on. Because we want to, you, you, what we want to avoid is groupthink, right? Where you get this sort of convergence to the exact same scenarios or exact same results. We want to ensure that there is uh, a realistic sort of diversity of, uh, of, in, of, of model results. And then the insights we draw from that uh, um, uh, are then more robust. Yeah, did that answer your question? Okay, I said I had a few more slides to present um, on the Miro board. Um, so I've got uh, uh, this slide here is on, I guess I'd like you to reflect here on the feasibility of you being involved in uh, this comparison project. So if you were to think about, excuse me, if you're going to think about actually doing some scenario runs, by how much effort do you think you could spend on this? And I guess you need to reflect on uh, the fact that participation isn't funded. Um, so you'd need to fund that through other projects. That's one aspect. And then there are sort of practical issues of how long does it take me to implement a scenario in my model? 
how much effort could we spend on converting to this IAMC template? Uh, and how much, what's the sort of value versus effort trade off that I perceive um, in engaging in an activity like this? So, any comments or suggestions? And there's a sort of silly uh, uh, matrix here where you can kind of place yourself within this space of I think it'll be too difficult or uh, it'll be easy to participate. And then on how much, how much in terms of the number of scenarios you think you could run, but uh, where you sort of place yourself on this. So I think, uh, yeah, um, uh, any comments or suggestions there would be good. Uh, another slide on more sort of practical comment. So this is about this, uh, the sort of headache, the pain you have to go through of converting your model results into that in uh, the IAMC template or any kind of format that's interoperable. Um, so just some, some comments or uh, suggestions here. Um, and I guess what we're interested in is uh, what role could, um, uh, could the forum play in providing tooling? Um, uh, uh, could we produce some kind of uh, community effort to help with this? Uh, what existing tools exist uh, are there to, to help process uh, model result data? And then the big question, I guess, what capacity would you, in what capacity would you like to participate in this forum is after seeing my spiel here today, is this something you think would be interesting for your group? What are the sort of your barriers to participating? Um, uh, so any sort of open question, uh, really, but uh, any comments or suggestions you have here would be, would be really interesting to see, uh, yeah, how we could shape the, the the future of the forum so that it serves you better. So we'll ask, we'll spend another sort of 15, 20 minutes here and then I'll, I'll wrap up uh, in the final 10 minutes and we'll finish at 12 o'clock. So a few more interesting questions in the room. So one was, uh, why is the protocol in US dollars? And uh, that's a good question, I don't really know. Um, but I think obviously comes down to the question of data again and units and so on that is another I guess bundled in with the the headache around dealing with data formats and definitions and the other question was uh, well my model gives results just for one year so all of these scenario definitions are sort of they define some kind of trajectory or assume that your model uh, creates a, a pathway um, and my response there is that well that's a really good feedback. So please sort of comment on that. Um, but also it's really valuable to compare these different types of models, right? So a model that focuses on just one year in a lot of detail uh, is it, the insights from that or the comparison of that with say an integrated assessment model that also includes that same year. You get a lot of, uh, a lot of interesting uh, insights from that if you are able to compare them, if they have shared uh, result variables and you deal with the regional aggregation and so on. So yeah, any comments you have like this, if you don't understand something or it just doesn't make sense, please uh, provide feedback on the on the mirror board and we'll we'll work with that. All right. Hi everyone. So um yeah, thanks very much for participating in the session today. I'm gonna to spend a couple of minutes now just sort of closing up and going through um, through what we've been through in today's session. Uh, and talking a bit, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how you can engage with us and how we want to uh, engage with you over the next two years of the project. And then hopefully the uh, many years after that where the uh, ECEMF, the European Climate and Energy Modeling Forum, becomes some kind of independent entity which is funded in some way which we know not yet, but which we will plan for during the during the project. Um, so yeah, in, in today's session, I started off by trying to motivate why model comparison is important, um, talking about just the plethora of different stakeholders involved in this sort of wicked problem that we have of how to transition to a climate neutral uh, Europe. 
uh, at the huge number of, uh, of us, of researchers, different institutions developing a whole multitude of different types of models to answer different questions. And then what we want to do in the forum is try and uh, create a more robust evidence base by enabling conversations between modelers, building this sort of model comparison exercise uh, to get modelers talking to one another so that we can compare our assumptions, compare our model results, compare our models, and provide a more sort of informative uh, and, I guess, self-organized uh, set of evidence to, to policymakers to, to, to uh, yeah, better support policy and decision making. Uh, and then in the interactive sessions, we did a, an exercise on sort of mapping different stakeholders and, uh, and modelers and, or sorry, models and institutions. Uh, and we'll go away and sort of try and uh, put that all together so that we can see uh, how the, uh, the open mod participants here, how you, how you sort of sit within this ecosystem then of, uh, uh, of different stakeholders. Uh, and we'll we'll look to sort of grow that over time, I think, and uh, look at this sort of network of uh, uh, of models. We'll share that. Uh, maybe we'll share that on the Open Mod Forum. Um, but anyway, we'll 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 share it back with you. Uh, and in the uh, in this last exercise, we took more of a look at the actual process of then doing a model comparison. So, what does it mean to go from our research project where we've worked sort of on our own in our in our research project for two years, comparing models with one another. How do we try and open that up to the community and engage you in, in that exercise? What are the barriers to doing that? What's the value that you perceive from, from doing that? And what are the challenges? Uh, so this is the first in hopefully a number of uh, similar workshops that we'll be doing on this topic. And as we try and then build uh, build a sort of legacy of uh, ECMF, turn it into this institution which uh, supports you in your in your research. Um, so how do you uh, engage with us? Well, um, we've got numerous points or a few points online. So we actually have a, a community forum, which, uh, like the Open Mod forum, is based on discourse. Uh, so that's one uh, obvious place to. Uh, uh, to go to if you have any questions about this model comparison exercise uh, and uh, want to contact us and get some feedback or share some ideas following this project. So that's at community.ecmf.eu. Uh, you can follow the project on our, on our website, ecmf.eu, uh, and uh, on social media. Uh, and you can look at our public results uh, on the Scenario Explorer. So that's at data.ece.earsa.ac.at forward slash ECEMF. And yes, I'll share these slides afterwards so you can find that link again. So yeah, there's a few references from the, the few papers I mentioned in the presentation, but um, that basically closes today's, uh, today's session. Um, we've still got 10 minutes, but um, you're free to stick around and continue playing with the mirror board if you'd like. Uh, um, but uh, uh, otherwise, I'll say thanks a lot for joining today's session and for coming along. And um, yeah, I'm really uh, looking forward to engaging with you over the next three days of capacity building and, and the, the, the workshop itself. So thanks a lot. <laughs>